And welcome back everyone to the second series of Group B and our match of the week, G2 Esports versus Team BDS. From last place in summer to top five in the regular season in winter, BDS has had a massive turnaround since bringing their ERL superstars, Adam, Sheo, Crowny, flanked by Nuke in the mid lane and former Vitality support, Lebrov. This org and these players are on a redemption arc and tonight, they look to prove themselves against one of the tournament favorites, G2, who have their eyes set on yet another trip to MSI. This matchup may seem like a battle between David and Goliath, but these teams are actually neck and neck in the standings, coming into the group stage as fourth and fifth seed. And I'll leave it to Goldberg and Ender to break down the strengths of the team and what happened last time they faced in week three. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, the last matchup between these two teams was super exciting, and we had so much expectations hype around the bot lane matchup that it right. was so amazing to see unfold because in classic fashion, the 2v2 got spicy right off the bat. Yeah, and this is in a context where Hans Summer and Mickey was kind of looked at like the best Number one. bot lane in the league. And then Crowny and Lafroff slowly but surely shows up. They did it throughout some of the weeks, but look at this play right here. I love it. Crowny breaking the ankles of Hans right there with the back step to dodge away from the feathers, then knowing they can turn it around. Lebrov also held the heel all throughout this fight until the Grievous Wounds Those from 40%. the Ignite timed off to get full value on the heel. That was a difference maker in the play. And it just kept happening. Um, the micro things, you can see the flash from Crowny here as well after the cleanse from the Root. They just kept on getting the outplay on Hansama and Mickey again and again and again and again and even on the other side of the map because it wasn't just about bot lane yeah adam up there grabbing a solo kill up against broken blades the sides of the map looked really good and i think importantly in the bot lane matchup this isn't a situation where it was like crowning was way better than the duo on that side this was a moment where like the small outplay switches the entire landscape of the lane and they were able to run away they were able to continue to punish yeah yeah from that point of what we just showed right now you're probably thinking well it looks like bds would have won you want yeah, bot sure, lane you want top lane right, right? Um, but uh, Pride really is the downfall of man as well because we're going to go to a uh, fight here in the jungle. Uh, as you can already see from the beginning, a lot of this is actually on Vision. Mickey just cleared out a pink ward as well. So BDS is actually opting into this play. But what we're going to see from BDS here is going to be forced errors coming through. And unfortunately, specifically from Shio, who goes for the ultimate on Han Summer. Yeah, it's a big mistake up against the Zaya. Also, the range of Crowny was going to pinch into Han Summer there. So I think if Shio had been a little bit more patient, there's no way Han could stack up against the damage of Crowny in that situation. And then because of sort of the, the geometry of this area of the map, like G2 get to group up, fight behind Caps, so, or fight in front of Caps, so Caps is able to get free damage down. Hansama can rejoin the fight and, and BDS fall. And that's really where, you know, the big damage, as you said, is being done. Not just the fight, but the fact that the shutdown go over to Caps here. Because Caps, with these kills all of a sudden, well, he starts taking over the map. Bot may have been pinned down. Tough may have been pinned down, but all of a sudden, mid lane is no longer pinned down, and that brings us to this place. And we can see at the minimap right now, there's a big skirmish. Oh, that's a oh, you can circuit. see Nuke on that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get to him in a second, though. But as you can see right now on the there top side of the map, as we can roll it out, lots of skirmish coming out here. You can see currently Nuke, Caps on the way up there to join them. And maybe a little bit of a mistake from Nuke here. He d I don't know if he doesn't have the Abscond of Duct or anything, but he doesn't stop He's Caps. holding on to the Nautilus ult in this fight, so he doesn't... Oh, the Abscond of Duct, right, yes. <laughs> and as you can see right now, as Caps comes in, once again, He's joined it. We take a look at the minimap. Nuke is immediately going to go down towards the bot side. He actually sees, well, honestly, this game is over, or not game, but this play on top side is over already. I can't join it. He's going to leave. Caps is around, and that's why he just starts tearing BDS apart. Yeah, it seems like there were multiple situations in this game as well where it wasn't even G2 the ones to be the aggressors. It was BDS maybe overreaching right. for a fight, and then G2 playing really smart, especially when they're reclaiming vision in their jungle or in the river. They're all behind each other right here. So BDS BDS didn't actually have deeper vision, I don't believe, of G2 approaching. They thought they could find a pick, but then it's actually Shio in the face of four different players of G2 because when G2 play to re-clear dark areas of the map, they are playing together. Yeah, and once again, good feathers comes out from hands, and it's just a story where BDS gets ahead, they make one mistake, Caps get ahead into the game, and when Caps get ahead, well, it's pretty much going to look like this right oh. here where they just completely take over. Realm Warp's still up and available, and we just continue with the clip. Well, they all just get blown apart. So. Matchup for today, once again, it can still very much be competitive from the laning phase, but Caps, 
you gotta pin him down somehow. Yeah, you gotta be able to stop him, and you have to be able to carry over your advantages from the lane phase, not get too over eager to play into the enemy jungle. Make sure you get down the vision first before committing to a big play like that. But with that, we can actually walk back over and join Lord here. Come on, here. join me. I rate, rate that segment out of 10. Individually vocal. or collectively? Yeah, 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 but make sure I get a better rating. Okay, in the, in, the, in the spirit of <sighs> teamwork and everything, I'll give you a solid 12 out of 10. Thank All you right, so, so we both got sixes. The, That's the stage. Yeah, decent. Yeah, six each. That's decent. Uh, let's focus on the journey these two teams went through, focusing a bit uh, at first on BDS. We said it uh, last year. They were 10th, 5th uh, this year. Quite an improvement, especially given the fact that they just switched players between the academy and the main lineup. But this is the mix they needed. I really love watching BDS. Yeah. And I would not, going into the split, have thought that was a sentence I would say. I love watching Adam. I love watching Laprov and Crowny. I really think they're intelligent mm -hmm. in terms of how they play around the bot lane. And I don't think they're afraid to make mistakes, which is why they play so aggressive that they do, where they go for highlight plates. I really think Shio has stepped up as well. And Nuke has improved his play style from earlier. I was watching an interview earlier that Adam did with Ashley Kang from Horizon. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was basically talking about how his entire career had been nothing but ups until he got demoted out of the LEC and had to fight his way back there and how he was just hungering to get back to the main stage and now considers himself number one, number top two uh, top laner in EU and quite frankly with the three weeks he showed us, I absolutely agree. He's been absolutely dominating the top lane on meta picks, on his own flavor of the month picks as well that he continues uh, flavor of the month, OTP picks. Yeah, That's OTP picks for. rather, but they, uh, they make sense now. An absolute classic And they make sense now in the meta which is uh, amazing for Adon. He showed up big and on the other side we have G2 reformed with new members and I really want to highlight Yike here. Also coming from IRL and in the verge of becoming one of the best junglers maybe we have. Oh yeah, LEC. for sure. It, I, honestly, what a start to have as a rookie as well coming into the split. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was some ups and down in the middle of the split, but the start he had, if that doesn't boost your confidence, I don't know what would. I mean, everything in G2's playstyle was just to set up and play behind Yike right. in the early game, which is just amazing to see them take that approach with a rookie jungler the first time in years that they've had a new jungler under the G2 name, and Yike has been stepping up performing. Now, though, this is where I think the real test comes for him. Now that teams don't have to prep for three different games in a weekend, three different junglers, they are prepping for you. They are prepping for mm -hmm. Yike. That is the biggest challenge a new jungler will face and where they can get found out. It is very important that Yike comes in here with new ideas, new ways to approach the early game, and I'm confident that with him and the rest of G2 that he can do that. And it's going to be really interesting, especially with the ma matchup against Shio. Shio being uh, instrumental in being BDS's early game. We saw amazing things on the side of BDS. Ups and downs from G2, but mostly a dominant team. But coming into today's series, I, I think we're going to have an intense fight between these two teams. Oh yeah, for sure. And I think it's going to get dragged down to yeah. the bot lane again. I think mid laners are going to be pivotal in terms of who gets the first move. But if uh, this series will be any like the other series we've watched so far, a lot of the attention will be down, drawn down towards the bot side with one maybe uh, exception towards the top side. Yeah, for BDS. I was going to say, two things to look out for. Olaf sprinting at you in top lane at level <laughs> one uh, and Mickey's Nautilus hooking you at level one. If you avoid those two things, you're safe. And we're only minutes away from peaks and bands, so let's get hyped for the LG Ultra Gear match of the week. G2 Esports versus BDS. G2 on an absolute tear. G2 are favorites. A roster of big names expected to climb right back up to the top. BDS for a team judged by their past failures. Expected to be fighting at the bottom. At the end of the regular season, only one win separates these two teams. Everyone was putting us time for it, and now we're fifth. I think people are just wrong, and they need to accept that. Everyone thought that this was just going to be a bottom of the table team, but this is a team that's worth watching. I think uh, Crowny has proved a lot of things compared to before, and him and Labro actually are one of the only bot laners that I think actually talk about the laning phases together, like me and Hans. BDS, I feel pretty confident. I think uh, last time we won, I think we have a pretty good idea of how they want to play and how to cut them down. The pride has arrived, and all four members of Mad Lions barreling into G2. They get a double kill for Chasey. Caps cannot stand in the Lions. 
I think G2, the weakness this uh, regular season was disrespecting with some drafts or testing a bit too many things. Apps is locked in the Zach mid. Karma top Talia supported. Will be locked in. So if they let their guard down again, I think they can be punished. Third realm walk forward. Where are you gonna go, BDS? Cause G2 are on the hunt. Cavs still chasing forward. Shayo falls to an overload. And BDS have met their match. G2 will wipe them off the face of the rim. Yes, our team is very aggressive and we like to take a lot of chances in draft, which gets punished, I guess, and to some extent in best of ones because if you lose your you're out in best of threes, you can take a loss and then just win the next game. I mean I think there's way more on the line for G2 since people are putting a span of knife, but people are putting G2 first and second. On the line is uh, our pride and <laughs> going going to winner's bracket, most likely face my lines there and get a revenge for the best of one. Everything on the line. Everything. Welcome back to the cast address for our match of the week. G2 Esports versus Team BDS. I like those lower half of the players that we have on the player sleds there. That's popping. <laughs> yes. I'm Dracos. Cajal is standing next to me. <laughs> if you're in audience, you can appreciate the sight of G2's it's like you legs can just see on the left hand side. Heads, so it's kind of like the full body. It feels, yeah. Well, it feels like a pants ad, to be completely honest with you. But there it is. <laughs> the monitors with their upper body, their um, torso. Yeah, yeah. It works pretty well. No, but, but it yeah. was, yeah, it was popping. Good video. Um, yeah, good video. Um, and it's, it's just some, summed up, right? A lot of people had a lot of doubts around BDS. They're going to finish 10th. They're going to be one of the worst teams. Here they are. They're in fifth. I mean, we put, and we've, we were, people have memed our tier list a lot, but we expected this team to be in C tier based on, like, kind of the lack of historic success that this organization and also a lot of the players on this team have had, often very middling. But I think we have to give them credit where it is due. Rising, surpassing expectations kind of across the board. Shio, big standout name, obviously, yep. but Adam as well has improved so significantly since his last time on the LEC stage and the bot lane, Crown Shot and LeBron. I mean, you saw them last time these two teams played head to head, outplaying in the 2v2, yep. showing up when it mattered. It was, a, it was a big deal. And they got a massive lead on bot side. They just threw it away with a late invade towards the red, where I think the Sejuani ult hit, they overextended. Um, they need to be a, a little bit more reserved in their gold leads because I think making mistakes against some of the teams from, you know, like fourth to about 10th. You will get punished, but not as hard. But up against G2, up against teams like Vitality, if you make those mistakes, the whole game can fall apart. So BDS, they do get these leads. Hopefully they play a lot more responsible with them. Cadrill, you said it right before the dramatic music kicked in, but I think there's just something so different. It means so much more to win a best of three than it does to win a best of one. And we've seen it across a lot of the best of threes this weekend already in the sense that, you know, the teams that aren't expected to do as much can maybe take a game, but it's about winning the series. It's about finding those two wins. And we'll see if BDS can stand up today and be accounted for if they can knock G2 Esports down. It would be a pretty monumental upset as far as expectations go, but they came close the last time they played in best of one. For now, though, not surprising to see a lot of bot lane priority champions taken off the board. Yeah, my eyes are on top lane. What is Adam going to pick? Red side is going to be his bread and butter in terms of three picking a top lane or banning two away or just leaving it to last pick. Bot lane will obviously be targeted in terms of pushing bots. It's the whole meta. And I feel like Adam's like the meta breaker we have right now in the LEC. He can play these different and wild champions. We've seen it so many different times. Jace, Sejuani, just such power picks. We'll see what they opt into here because Lucian's up, Zeri's up. Jax going to be broken base first pick. Want to take that away from Adam. Make sure he's got a good matchup. I mean, Adam. I think he will probably go towards something like Olaf and Darius to match it. He could play Jace as well. I think that matchup works pretty well. It. I'm don't not talk about don't it. Let it. Um, but I'm not say up, that I we're think... really excited about one particular potential yeah. champion coming out, and that you might see it right now. It's not that one. Um, he's been playing it a lot in, in Champions Q, Gary. Yep. Um, so I think Sejuani here, Lucian, Nami, Zeri, anything like along those lines are just power picks. As much as you have these pocket picks, it's not for now. It's for later. Um, and they'll save it till later on the draft. I expect or yeah. three pick G2. Knowing G2. Bot lane on 2-3 could work very well here, or just going full top side, you know, uh, Jax get something like the Vi, make sure Yike doesn't drop down. Haven't seen his Vi just yet, Kindred could be another one if they want to play Kindred into Sejuani. 
And one of the advantages of G2's bot lane being so consistent is that you can prioritize them in draft, or you can allow them to slip through to 4-5 and let some more bans head their way, see how deep that champion pool goes. But I imagine with the Zeri locked in, G2 would love to now have some options here. Difficulty, of course, is the picks are mismatched thus far. We have a Jax, which we're assuming is going to the top lane versus a jungle, and an AD carry on the opposite side. So. As we head into second ban phase, someone's pool is most likely getting pinched here. Lilia, Lilia. now coming out. Now, this is a champion I thought might be a little bit better. She did get some uh, small buffs coming in onto this patch. Of course, Demonic Embrace was nerfed, though, so a bit of a hit to her. But with so much healing removed from the game, Lilia now one of the few champions that really feels like she holds on to that heal, drain tank, bruiser kind of identity when she's like, up against a beefy front line. So they are going to go full top side. They're going to go double AD solo laners with the AP jungler in Lilia. Um, they're going to sack their bot lane here, so they're giving up on things like Lucian Nami. I wouldn't be surprised to see something like a Varus ban as well. So BDS over indexing on bot side here. I expect them to pick support. Something like Lulu could work if they want to ban too. But if they feel the need to match mid or top here, I wouldn't be surprised. And they might feel need to match mid, looking at something like Azir here or Ryze. Azir does struggle a little bit against Poke in general. If you just think back to counter matchups of Azir, you know, the Lethality Varus mid was a bit of a struggle. Anything that, with longer range than him where he can't actually auto is just so so difficult. Um, so they're going to go for Ryze instead, make sure that Nuke can move around the map. But yeah, Lilia did get changed on 13.1b. Um, we'll see how Yike can pilot it, but definitely a curveball for the best of three. G2 coming in with something they prepared all week long. And this is kind of what we were hoping for when we looked at a new patch was to see new picks. And while we have gotten a bit of a spicy taste in our previous best of three, I'm glad that we're seeing more here as we get deeper and deeper into the patch as more teams get to show us what they have been working on. No surprise to see something like the Kalista taken away, denying some of the premier aggressive bot lane options for G2. Yeah. I think no reason to give to them comfort might as well push them back, see how deep the champion pool goes. Of course, uh, Zaya, Sivir, both champions who benefited from the AD carry itemization changes, could come out here as the Lucian has now been taken out. Yeah, they've taken away explosive bots. I think G2 will struggle to find any bot lane matchup that will force hard in 2v2s unless they're willing to go down some kind of Samira route. There's the Garen for Adam, Woo! locked in. He's been playing it in Champions Q. We haven't seen it in competitive from him just yet this year. And we'll see how he can do up against Broken Blades, Jax. Normally teams ban out Adam's champions on the 4-5, but he's going to get his hands on that Garen. Excited to see how he performs. They're leaving support till 5 here, so with the Lulu ban, they want to counter. Something like Braum could work if they go for some kind of Varus Nautilus lane. Varus Karma would be good if they just want to play for push. Samira lane could be good if they want to play for all-ins. Vayne could also work pretty well, I think. Said you wanted Garen. It's an option. Not sure if Handsome wants to pilot it with the Nautilus by his side, but I think Braum here on five for BDS is an amazing pick if they want to go for it. See if that is the option they go towards for now, though. Have the aggressive Nautilus. What AD carry is going to be? Whoa. What? Kaisa Nautilus. Kaisa Classic. would make a lot of sense. Again, Kaisa, another champion who has benefited from those changes, yeah. taking their time. Both of these teams cannot be trusted when it comes to hover overs. Kaisa does make a lot of sense. Again, short range, but the rise in the area are both relatively short range. Alistar now. just picked up straight away into this Kaisa. I want to make sure they can get lockdown. They want to make sure they can get some CC. I mean, they do have a little bit with the Seju on your eyes, but they want someone that can go in so the Garen, I presume, can follow up really easily. Kaisa does, I was thinking of Vayne because, you know, the Garen, Sejuani, melee support most likely with these bands. And Zeri not too much of a lane punisher, but Kaisa can fit that as well in terms of percent HP damage getting through those tanks with things like the Kraken. So we'll see how Hansama builds, but very different different drafts coming out from both these teams. We First time we'll see Lilia, Hansama banned out, not finding any difficulties in finding a bot matchup. And Adam on Garen, how is he going to perform? Does Sheo play top side here? I think with these melee supports in bot, it's going to be really explosive on the 3v3. And I'm really ready for some incredibly scrappy 3v3s. As you highlighted, this is going to be the kind of game where if you build a lead in the early game, it's going to be so easy to keep that snowballing with so many aggressive melee champions and picks. The Garen, a bit of a curveball, but also on the bottom side, as you highlighted, Alistair, Kaisa Nautilus, uh, you know, Zeri feels like a new addition to what was essentially a 2019 so, 2020 sort of meta. Two things. Number one, Lilia Nautilus level one against Alistar Sejuani. I'd be a bit scared if I was BDS of a late invade bot side or some kind of split map. Not optimal when you're playing these kind of carry matchups top, but we'll see how they play around it because Lilia's pace is so quick that if Sejuani is there, you can then push her out to her other side of the jungle. Second thing is, these top laners, no TP, double ignite, Garen and Jax. So there's going to be an absolute fist fight up there, but we're ready for game one of G2 versus BDS.
All right. Spicy level one, we're keeping our eyes out for here. Remember, best of three across this entire stage. If you win two, you are in. You keep that second life. If you lose two series, even if you make it to best of five, Adam, you will be out. Adam knows they might late invade Balter, look for some kind of pushback on the Alistar Sejuani, so he's just sitting in bot brush. Nothing will happen, but good presence of minds to stop yeah. any kind of invade. Interesting to see the rune choices coming out here as well. Not watching a lot of the Champions Q games, but I like Phase Rush into Jax, get out of range of that stun, be able to stick, especially on the squishier targets as we get later into the game. Garen is one of those champions that most of us don't see, I think. You have the occasional uh, low elo top lane enthusiast who likes to bust it out, but it is a champion that when it gets ahead, especially with Phase Rush, yeah can just spin on you. It is a nightmare to lock down. It's really, really difficult. And G2 don't have that much CC. They're going to have to rely on Mickey X to stop Adam from getting onto hands. But I think their dive is just so strong. I mean, the beauty of Rise Alistar is you can obviously use the Rise ult to Realm Mob to get the Alistar behind and then almost like knock the carry into you or force a flash from the get-go. So we'll see how Nuke gets creative with the Rise with the Alistar. Even with the Garen, it can work pretty well. But both junglers starting on opposite sides. Yike going to go for a bot side start, maybe looking to pass top early, but I would like him to do some kind of Red Crux Raptors into enemy blue. We'll see how mid push goes. Um. Yeah, keeping an eye on it. This is a game where there's a lot of champions on both sides that feel like if they snowball, they can really take over this game. Lilia also one of them where there's so many beefy frontliners that will just get shredded when she does eventually go for Demonic Embrace. Although it was hit, she just does so much damage to those tankier picks. Yeah. But level one on bot side, not too explosive. Both sides giving each other that respect. We'll see who gets level two first as we check in at other places on the map. Yeah, so Shio did red into blue. I think he was a bit scared of that invade, but it looks like Yike's not going to go for it. He's just going to go for a full clear. And it makes sense. You're playing Lilia. Um, you want to make sure you can just get all your camps down, look to the, get a little bit of power farming in. Level two for G2. Good hook, good punish here. Managed to proc the plasma stack. So LeBron taking a decent chunk there. Uh, Alistair. Changes coming soon, but for now, the unchanged Alistar on this patch, he has changed on live. Ooh, what Still feeling Mickey. good about it. Good Ignite now coming in, forcing Crowny away. Crowny just trying to trade back a little bit of damage here as LeBrov body blocks what he can. Uh-oh, danger yes. alert. Yes. See if they crash this wave and get out. They should know that Ryze is moving down here. G2 want to crash this wave, but LeBrov kind of wants to hold it. Mickey X. Mickey is in trouble. That's not where you want to be. He's going to need a clean flash to make it out of this one, but he just does not have the time. He's going to try oh, to make it work. Anyway, Mickey just living with the Baron Summer of Life. No, first blood coming in for Nuke. Massive kill on the bottom side for BDS. I feel like this was a bit of a telegraph play from BDS. I'm not sure how the vision around mid went when Nuke came towards bot side, but G2 tried to crash the wave and they get caught off guard. Caps is now moving down, trying to see if he can stop Nuke's base because there's a mid wave crashing on a tower, deny him those creeps, get something back. But first blood over to the Rise. That's what you want to see with Rise. You want to make sure you can roam around and help your team as much as possible, especially in these BD support matchups. I mean, it's big. We'll see what it really does for the bottom lane. Of course, they were kind of just catching waves in that instance. Losing an entire wave does cost a decent amount of gold. So overall, you can see it's only about 200 gold positive for that kill play on the bottom side because he did give up so much CS and XP as well, to be fair. But Caps roaming top it's a dive. It's with no mana. Is this going to be a three-man dive? I don't know if they can pull this off. We'll see how much damage they can do. Adam. I don't think they can do this. The only question is when to spin. Flash, phase rush, parked. Are they going to redive? Broken Blade's really low. Caps is going to have to be the one to tank if they want to pull this off. This could turn into a one for one. I think it might. They're going to try to fully commit for this one. He's just continuing to spin, and Caps gets taken down in the end. That's just a one for one. Not ideal for the side of G2. Of course, yeah. Adam is losing a ton of XP. He has no TP, so it's going to put him in a massive deficit. But meanwhile, oh. the counter play on the bottom side. Mickey X, perfect hook buffer. Taking him out to safety means there is no kill here for BDS. Really good buffer there by Mickey to get out of the combo from Lebrov. Shio can spend so much time down here because he knows exactly where G2's mid jungle are. They were top trying to dive for so, so long. Went into a one for one and Nuke is the one who's freed up. Caps TP's back. Really aggressively tries to get on top of Nuke. Push him back. Hook lands. Clean Crowny. Hook. It's gonna be all right. BDS just wanting to crash this wave. G2 trying to stop them, but in the end, they'll have to give it up. So first base coming in here for Shio and Yike. Both junglers taking a base, but I think Yike is the biggest winner out of this. Gets a kill top. And as much as Caps died, look at the CS difference in jungle. He managed to take all his top camps in terms of Raptors and Krugs. Wards in the top side jungle of Shio. Only level three. So Sejuani using her time to help the team. We'll get towards level four, but yeah, there's no camps up here. So Yike's just going to keep power farming. And this is big. And honestly, when we talked about this matchup, we looked at bot lane, we looked at mid. Jungle, we know, is important for both these teams, but it wasn't really our center of attention. So to already see Yike off to such a strong start 
kind of forces us to shift looking at this Lilia, seeing what this Lilia had done, because this is a massive XP discrepancy when we look at it. Lilia pulling wildly far ahead, and this is going to make it hard for the Sejuani to do anything. Yike just owns the jungle right now. I think what Shio has done is quite smart, though. He knows that Yike's going to reset, go back, vault, and clear his second respawn, so he just runs into Yike's topside. Just going to take away the Wolves and the Grump, maybe. Mickey. Looking for some action here in the mid lane. No Nuke relatively low oh. on mana. Hook into the minion, though. Definitely not ideal. LeBron waiting with Hexclash over the wall, but I don't think he can save it. He's just going oh, into the midst of the meat grinder, and no one else is there. Shield Blast Cones back over the wall to run away. BDS, no. Oh, they are just throwing kills into Bambi. You can't make these kind of mistakes against G2. We'll see if Shio can get onto Broken Blade. He just level up to level six. Level six is massive. It gives him so many additional stats. It means he's going to buy that much more time. The rest Yikes of the team here. now descending. Yike is a big boy. Swirl Seed. Not going to connect. Adam level 6, ticking over before he can use his ultimate to finish off Broken Blade. Mickey in the area. And right now, G2 just coming out so far ahead in that trade. 1.5k gold lead, essentially on the back of that play. G2 classic jungle support towards mid, 5 to 6 minutes in. Rise, no flash. I think BDS giving up nuke there is fine, but I think Labrov maybe thought Shio was closer and they could turn it into a 1 for 1, but yeah, just a mistake. An extra kill over to Yike. He's going to be so far ahead. And he is going to be the main AP threat. So Mickey fails the hook, yes, but I think Lebrov just has to call it here. The play is over. Shio, he queued over the wall I saw on the left side of the screen there, and they took the blast cone back over. Now, I'm not sure if that was a misclick or if it was just a let's go, hang on a second. No, I'm getting out of here. Uh, so Lebrov ends up losing his life, tries to salvage it with a top play. Doesn't manage to get anything out of Broken Bait other than the ultimate. Both AD carries just sitting in isolation, farming up. The supports have returned. Right now, that farming going very much in favor of Crowny, but only 200 gold to his name. Not going to mean too much at this stage of the game. And it's a turbo fed Lilia, which is going to be very problematic for this team to deal with, to lock down as we move ahead into fights. Of course, they have the luxury of a pretty beefy front line on the side of BDS, a lot of hard CC, so it's not impossible to take the Lilia out. But have to give respect for that champion. You already talked about it. And we talk about it kind of every time we see AP junglers. AP junglers snowball so much harder because their clear speed increases exponentially when they get these early items. Lilia, no exception to that. Just gets faster and faster, doesn't it? So things like Diana and Lilia are just so good at clearing through jungle camps. Kartus is another example. So Yaik will just get quicker and quicker on the clears and just keep power farming through his jungle and getting into river first. And Shio already down a level. I think he won't mind too much. He is just playing a tank. He just needs to look for plays. Get over to level six, get Caps' flash, get some mid push for Nuke, and then try to salvage some of these side lanes, as though they're not that far behind, but getting towards these objectives is really important. You can see Broken Blade's already first to help Yike out on the Herald. Mickey's already in River on bot side if anything around the Drake happens, but Yike's chosen the top side. And uh, to see if BDS can find a cross map. They know it's down now. Shio should look to secure the Dragon, but it's a bit difficult. But Lilia can get down here so quickly. The good news, of course, despite Shio being pretty far behind in gold, he's caught up at least in terms of level overall. Can try to make some impact here. It's difficult to know where you actually want to put your resources at this stage because you can't really match the Lilia. Mm. She's just so far ahead, so you kind of need to look to make plays elsewhere, but there's no real easy lane to gank and shut down at this point in the game. Good news is uh, Yike's gone for Lucidity Boots, which is obviously the correct choice, but they have Rise Sejuani, so they can layer a lot of CC on top of Yike if they can lock him down. That'll be really, really crucial around this next Dragon if BDS want to contest it because looks like Shio's moving up towards the top side. Sejuani with any melee champ top laner like Garen is good at locking down champs too. But Broken Blade's been playing pretty safe. You can see him on the minimap just standing in a bush. Pushes in a wave, stands in a bush, waits for information, doesn't want to give anything over to BDS. Has he based? Is he staying? So Adam thinks he's based. And then he can just catch a wave for free. So that's just playing safe in top, making sure he's uh, fine in isolation. His jungler's on Krugs, right? So there's no need to step up and look for anything risky. Yeah, when we look at scaling too, generally, give the edge to Jax. Now, I haven't seen a lot of Garen recently, and I know he is a nightmare if he can walk into your back line for free, but we know what a late game Jax can do, what a side lane Jax can do. That said, we still have to see the focus for Adam as we get later into the game. Looks like a potential early stride breaker to come out here just to help him stick onto potential targets. Yep. Now, three members, though, rotating to the top side, looking to snowball this Garen, looking to put an advantage there for Adam, but Broken Blade playing with a ton of respect, just willing to completely give up that wave, give up those plates, because meanwhile on the bottom side, you two are taking Dragon. And they might take something towards bot as well. BDS realize it. They might have to rise all down here if they commit for a dive. Broken Blade sees him on mid and is moving back towards his top side. A couple plates over. Mickey sees them moving through mid, so he will back away. So good cover from Shio. That pink ward just giving so much information. Might have to blast going out here. He's holding it. Nice swirl scene for a bit of poke. Always have to be respectful of the potential Lilia ultimate. But Kadrill, this is... When you show me these teams, when you show me their stats, 
I expected a bit more of a bloodbath in the early game, and it's been pretty controlled from both sides. I think BDS playing with a lot of respect, not looking to throw any advantages away or let the Lilia get any bigger than she already is. Looking for a play, though. Shio's been looking around the solo lanes majority of the time, despite being around both the first few levels. You can't really blame him, because crowny has been such a standout, but here's the old clean ultimate now coming in. They're oh. trying to lock him down. Squirrel C can result in the sleep. Will lock him down. They're now trying to port him out. Safety, yikes! Oh. Big damage coming in from the Lilia. Just absolutely dunks on him. What a turn. Incredible amount of burst, and he managed to get the Squirrel C to get the sleep to stop the dive. Not enough damage from BDS. So close to getting the kill onto Caps. They managed to get a summoner, but they lose. Shio in return. Now G2 bot lane looking to contest the next wave. They know where jungle is, trying to look for a fight. Rob stepping forward, finding the immediate lockdown on a Hansama of Mickey stepping forward to try to body block as many of the Zeri autos as possible. Hans immediately alting back to get out to safety. So far, a trade alt for all, but you can see Crowny. Wow. Big damage advantage when that ult is up and available. Still gets hooked here, but really not much of a counter play. Now getting LeBrov's ult as well. So alties for alties. Getting Mickey's flash as well, though, is pretty big. That's the way Mickey supports work. If you want to get the push, you have to fight, basically. Otherwise, they'll just kind of stand in your face and get the push themselves. So Mickey trying to contest the wave there, ends up losing his flash. And I think at this stage in the 2v2, the Zeri is just so strong. If she can just disengage after the hook, have Alistar ult in front of her and just get damage onto the Nautilus to just stack up the ult as much as possible, then there's not really much Hansama can do. Crowny trying to push him away, trying to look for some plates. Herald use top, they know where Yike is. Shio's in mid, trying to come towards the top side too. Lebrov is base and is running up here. Looks like they're trying to salvage any kind of play that G2 want to look for, but Caps is showing mid, so there's no real threat of a dive. Maybe they're looking for a play of their own, but with Yike, no flash, 400 gold shutdown. Sechiwani, Rise, Alistar. You need to play a little bit safer. Yeah. Good news, of course, for the side of BDS is because of the focus they played or put down earlier on the top side, Adam was able to grab a few plates, has built a 600 gold lead for himself. Some of that mitigated by the Herald usage on the top side, but Really, when we talk about Adam, we talk about signature change. Oh, hang on a second. Oh, he's the solo not. kill under tower. Looking for the solo kill, trying to finish off. Oh, 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 just in time. The graphic backing it up. Adam manages to find the solo Oh, And now Caps is going down to the mid lane. And just like that, BDS fire back. Solo lane galore. Incredible play from Adam. Manages to get the 1v1 dive. 100 to 0 is broken blade and flashes out. Shio. Oh, the E just missed. He can't get the ult on. Doesn't have flash either. He's trying to W4s. Maybe he's got more boost, but he can smite him here. Tier 1 boots are at him. Just Ooh, misses the Q. Maybe he's the next one can fast. land. He's spinning. Oh, the phase he's rush. He's just so fast. Okay. Adam with his best Sonic the Hedgehog cosplay. Is he going to dance catch on him? him? Emotes in dancing. 1k gold lead for this Garen. 2 and 1. And I think everyone will know from solo queue experience how hard it is to play up against the Garen that's ahead. Incredibly hard to lock down and so much damage at first. And Cadrill as we take a look at the replay. This is what makes, hold that thought, it's a different replay yeah. than I anticipated. So what happens here? It looks like LeBron probably flash combos him or no rise loot yet. W's the creep, Q flashes onto Caps with no flash because of the dive from earlier on. Easy lockdown, easy kill. That's the power of Rise, Alistar, Sejuani. And this is Adam versus Broken Blade. Look at him just spin. Just three ranged creeps. What happens here? Silence him, he can't get the E off. Then Where he... does the second sword even oh come from? Oh my God. And then he flashes out. Wow, not much. How much Broken Blade can really do that? Maybe if he dropped the Ignite, he could maybe trade one for one, but this Garen is going <laughs> to be... A... And this is the thing. Again, this is what makes Adam... In the past, I used to look at Adam's signature champions as a liability, but he's been improving so rapidly. We're going to need to add another champion to the list. We got the Darius. We oh, got the yeah, Olaf. You know point, what to expect. At what point does it stop becoming, you know, just Adam champions? And at what point does it start becoming like... When why other aren't, people why aren't play other them. playing yeah, these champions, I mean, right? that's a good question. I don't think the Garen is, is there yet. Admittedly, mm -hmm. but right now this looks like an infuriating matchup oh, yeah. to and play I, against. And I think the playstyle of the three champs are s similar in a way. You know, yeah. Darius, Olaf, Garen, they all kind of commit and they go in, and there's no real going out. <laughs> so Adam's just so accustomed to that playstyle that he's the only one that's pulling it off. Maybe even in the world right now. A couple of LPL top laners have shown Darius, like uh, King Tian, but other than Garen and, and Olaf, no one's really showing that kind of diversity in that playstyle. So now Shio's looking towards the top side to help Adam out. Keep in mind overall though, while it was positive for BDS, it's still a slight gold lead for the side of G2. And as they're able to grab a Herald, uh, it should continue to grow in their favor, but a lot of credit to BDS for evening up what was a pretty disastrous gold disparity early on. Hang on a second, what actually happened, Tom? Because yes, he's ahead at 1,000 gold, but look at the levels. Adam's two levels up on Broken Blade, but Mickey's looking for LeBrov. Nothing already happened there. Hands looking to chunk. They're looking to turn though, BDS. Wanna land a combo. LeBrov has to be careful here. No flash. Used it earlier to taxi into the mid lane and lock up caps. 
fishing for a fight. Hex flash over the wall. Shio not going to be in trouble. It's clean from Mickey X. Immediate locks down under Shio. He's ticking. He's burning. The ignite. The aftershock. Will it be oh, enough? Shio's trying to walk away. LeBron getting knocked back. Crowny killing one. Adam in the midst of everybody, and he just keeps spinning. It's a double for Crowny. Now he's going to take a quick nap. But G2, they're not going to get anything back yet. They get the shutdown finally onto Adam. A broken blade may have traded his life. Nuke stepping forward, Crowny stepping forward, the duos of carries finding the kills on the backside of that fight. Killing spree now for Crowny. Three kills onto this Zeri. Crowny's gonna sit on a lot of gold here, get towards his mythic quite quickly. Explosive fight in mid, and BDS come out on top. All came off the back of Mickey, landing an amazing hook onto Shio. He basically wasn't in the fight, he just had to ult and flash away. But Crowny doing so much work alongside Adam, and it was the Garen they had to worry about, but now it's the Zeri too, they get the dragon, and that'll go towards a Hex Tech Soul. So, great hook from Mickey. G2 trying to poke BDS away here. They want to get into the Dragon area and start it up, and it's Shio looking for caps. Mickey Hex flashes over, cancels the Q. Looks good, so G2 commits. But then LeBron looks for the combo, gets a double knock-up onto the carries of G2, and Crowny's just untouched. LeBron with the ultimate, just buying a lot of time. Adam gets one, and then the turn with the ultimate. BDS respected, they back away. Broken Blade manages to find Adam, but then he lo loses his life, going a bit too deep here onto Nuke. It can be so difficult to win these fights when the Adam gets into your back line, or when the Adam, when the Garen gets into your back line, the gets Adam. to the Adam, the Adam, the Chatham, the Chatham. Chatham. Say, yeah. When you start spinning on your back line, when Rise gets to just machine gun and hit everybody with the power of those spell flux, uh, it can be very hard to win fights. You know, G2 kind of want to keep them at an arm's distance until they can finish a kill. The fact that they also don't get Shio in that exchange mm -hmm. is crushing. Again, basically even gold here overall, but as we get later into the game, Nuke, I think, is going to have to be a big focus point because if G2 want to commit to these fights, this Rise can tear through them alongside Crowny. Now, you can see Vitality versus Koi tomorrow, but I think Crowny is the man that we have to talk about because last time these two teams played, while BDS ultimately uh, fell short, Crowny was a monster. Yep. Crowny winning the 2v2, he and LeBrov winning what looked like an unwinnable 2v2, turning a play on its head. He's been playing like a man possessed this season. And now he's set up to do it again. As it looks like Mickey's been Stay caught up. out. Should be an easy kill, easy finish. Crowny on a rampage. BDS are in an amazing spot right now. Gold on Zeri and Garen is exactly what they want. And the one who's ahead on G2 is Yike, but up against Shio on Sejuani, he doesn't really care. He's just building full tank anyway. So he's likely to fall behind. Lebrov has to pop the ultimate, a little bit scared of Caps and Yike getting the kill, looking for this top tier one. Broken Blade's responding with bot tier one. So even trade of objectives, most likely. But BDS pushing their advantage. Mickey X, bit of disrespect. Gets caught off guard. And um, it's not like BDS are gonna get outscaled at any point, is it? No. I think Zeri and Garen only get stronger. There's the Herald mid, so G2 using that objective to get an extra tower in mid. I think the struggle right now, Kendrill, is that Yike is so far ahead of Shio, but it's so much harder for G2 to use Yike to get stuff done. Yeah, Crowny being 1.3k ahead is infinitely more relevant in a team fight, because Lilia just against this team comp, as you yeah. highlighted, with Lucidity Boots, and again, the right choice for jungle clear, but with no, basically no tenacity outside of what you're going to get from uh, the Legends, yeah. you just get one and shot also, every fight. I think Silence is probably one of the most overpowered crowd controls in the game. Not many champions have it, right? And I think when Garen, if Adam just wants to flash Q onto, onto Yike, I think he'll kill him before he can even flash away. He's a walking flash away. of gold. It's just 450 yeah, sitting I, there. I think Adam's just going to one-shot him in the next fight. Lebrov can also flash on top of him. Yike has to play so pixel perfect in these fights because there's so much CC that he's up against. Yeah, because if you take Yike out of the equation, the only other member of the team who's ahead is Mickey by 200 gold, which doesn't mean anything. Now, mid lane within touching distance, but it's going to be all about time and the poke needed to really capitalize yeah. on that rise advantage. So while the goal is close, I feel like BDS are in total control of this game right now. 100% agree. Game is very even. It's just a mid tower difference, which is slightly in G2's favor. Gives them a little bit of extra push through mid. But the side lanes, I think, will be will be BDS favored. If they just match Adam into Broken Blade, he's still two levels up. Look at the experience bars as well. Yes, Broken Blade's close to level 11, but Adam's close to level 14. I think no surprise to see Adam topping the charts alongside Nuke, which is a big deal. And Yike actually pulling ahead of Broken Blade. And again, Broken Blade, I think, you look at it, yes, he didn't die initially in that lane phase, but him having to back off that tower and give up those two or three waves cost him a ton. That is that XP discrepancy. And the solo kill coming in as well immediately after, he's just in a very big hole that's going to take a decent amount of time to get out of. Also get around the map really quickly with this dead man's plate. <laughs> Doesn't have TP, now there's broken blade, <laughs> but he wants to make sure he's... <laughs> It's just fun to see a Garen running <laughs> well, around. I know, but it's the only time in the history of casting anyone has said, ah, oh, yes, we'll counteract the lack of teleport with, with the dead, dead man's blade. <laughs> Speed, power, precision. Look, Adam is prepared for this. It's something that not everybody is aware of. Yeah. And, like, GT want to dive top. They want to get top tier two, but look who's on the way. Adam's coming. 
up Trying towards to get his top tower. side. Good oh, luck landing the three man knockup. Nuke on the backside, only broken blade on top of him for now. Yike now leaping in. He's gonna man the sleep onto two. That's big. Both carries. Yike, it's his time to shine. He's gonna try to find him. Spin, spin, spin. Getting through. Broken blade taking out Nuke. BDS getting shut down. Finally, the Lilia is making an impact. Mickey flashing in, hooking, keeping the Sejuani locked. One more kill for G2 Esports. Only Adam left standing as G2 find the fight. That's gonna be Baron. Secured for G2 as well, four for one. Adam used his flash to kill Hans in the back line, but G2 ran straight into BDS. So Adam on the flank just had to try to catch up, but he couldn't get there in time before his carries had fallen. A little bit of disrespect there from BDS holding that top tier one. Thought they had members closer. Adam trying his best to respond. We'll get a mid tower, but just like that, game's blown wide open for G2. Look at it again. Lavrov's the one that gets caught initially, and it's not the end of the world because he's playing Alistar. But Shio, watch what he does here. He splits off. He goes towards hands with Adam, and that leaves Lebrov and Crowney so exposed. No cleanse, double ult on the carries, incredibly well played by Yike. And then Broken Man and Caps can follow up on that. No peel available. Dragon fight inbound. BDS gonna start it up. G2 quick back on the map with those Baron recalls. See if they can look to contest it. Yike, no flash, no smite. No chance of a steal, likely, but chance of a fight. No ult, Mickey now committing. Adam ready to go in on the backside, but for now, Broken Blade keeping him at an arm's length, and they're just collapsing onto Adam immediately. He's gonna blast Cone out to safety. He'll be fine for now. As the dead man's can just walk away from this one, but G2 found the advantage, found the fight, got the Baron, and now they're just trying to press as hard as they can, not looking to give BDS an opportunity to come back in this game. Yeah, if a sleep hits Crowny or Nuke, it's, it's lights out, isn't it? Big poke onto Lebrov. Does he use the ult here, Yike? No, he doesn't. Oh, oh. Oh my, that is a lot of- that He's just keeps going! Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> He's, he was on 69 HP. Stop, drop, and roll, LeBron. You're still on fire. My god, the burn is just unreal, isn't it? So G2 with his Baron gets mid tier two. Yikes, trying to move up towards his top side. Got the red. Maybe he's looking to push out top, but he's staying with his team. Broken Blade's pushing out bot. Looking for a side lane tier two here. And the poke is really strong from G2. You think of the Kaisa W, you think of the Jace QE. Uh, and then you think of the, the Lilia E. You don't think of Lilia and Kaisa so much as poke champs, but. Here we are, and it's working well. Well, and they buffed the cooldown on Swirl Seed. Much lower cooldown overall, just two five seconds off. So, the little things, and they add up. And again, when you're well, turbo-fed and you have both burn items, it does mean a lot of poke. Shio getting poked out before the tower even falls. Now a very sleepy Sejuani. will just get picked off here. BDS going back into G2, but Yike does so much damage. There's no room for the short-range champions on the side of BDS to play these team fights. Yeah, BDS, maybe a bit of miscommunication. Ooh, Ooh. Crowny. Oh! Nice w. Uh, just out of range. Bit of miscommunication, maybe. Shio's trying to hold the tower. Adam's on mid wave. Same situation as top, where they're trying to defend top tier one with Nuke and Lebrov, and Adam's not close enough. I think they're just overextending a bit too much on trying to salvage objectives, which are guaranteed losses. Yikes. Trying to look for something on the top side. Maybe he knows that Adam's around here. Mickey might take the portal. And if he shows on that top wave, there's a chance of collapsing. Mickey's just, he's just going alone. Here comes Broken Blade. Man on a mission. Broken Blade now stepping in. We'll spot out Crowny. Gonna back off here as he realizes he probably can't connect on the counter strike. Crowny still with the dash up and available. G2 moving into top side. Shio, the rest of BDS pulling back, trying to hold on to this tier two for as long as they can. 24 seconds left on the Baron. Already 4k gained on the back of this buff. Oh. And the poke is brutal. Yeah, Crowny has to dodge away from the swirl seed. There's the Kai's W. Shio has to block to get Crowny to base. Now, this is another thing where they just have to give it. The last couple times they've been trying to defend it. Crowny's still not able to base. G2 can keep going here. Five seconds left. That's maybe. A couple of tower hits they can get with his Baron up creeps. Adam now is jumping forward, spinning, will get stunned, will get pulled back and missed a team. LeBron jumping in just to make sure that Adam can back off, but G2 unable to break that inhibitor tower. Look at the gold lead in jungle now. Three levels up, Yike. 4.3k gold lead. And he is the only AP carry, so resource to him was G2's game plan, but Shio's not really been able to keep up ever since they started losing these fights. The knock-on effect of losing these fights is Lydia takes the whole map worth of camps, so just power farming away, getting all the kills. See if he goes towards the Magi's here. No, he's gonna pick up the Zonias instead. Baron up in two minutes, 30 seconds. The game will slow down a little bit now because tier twos are down. It's really hard for G2 to siege onto inhibitor towers without that buff. So they can look for picks. You can see Adam is pushing out bot. Mickey's going again. These Hextech gates make it so easy to collapse on sides. Hansa's around. Shield will spot out Broken Blade, but he doesn't know that the bot lane of G2 is behind Adam. I don't think he wants to cancel that back either way. Adam trying to run, good side step on the hook. Mickey not able to hit the wall there means he doesn't get pulled in. And right now, I think that a few, few of those fights, BDS was playing so well, they were leveraging their short range. G2 may be overconfident, but now that G2 have such a big lead, it's so easy for them to play out these siege scenarios. As you highlighted, Jace, yes, a poke champion, but you don't think of Lilia's poke. You don't always think of Kaisa's poke, but in this context, they do so much damage. 
to a lot of the squishier members on the side of BDS. Can also just hook the first target, proc, you know, the, the Kai's passive, whatever it may be, QW auto, and then just disengage constantly. There's no real threat of BDS just straight up engaging on it because they need to get onto the carries. I mean, it's tough for Adam, too, because in this case, Garen just kind of runs at you really fast, but Jace has an ability that makes everyone run forward or backwards really fast, so... Everyone's a speedy boy. Everyone's just a speedy boy, and that is not the situation that Garen wants to be playing into. Mickey needs to be careful. I think he's having a little bit of fun with these hex gates. It just, it's like a roller coaster ride for him. Maybe a bit too much fun is BDS. Now descending on the G2 support. Hansama waiting over the wall, though. LeBrov immediately forced to ultimate. Yike. It's the passive onto Crowny. LeBrov taken out. Now looking Ooh, for the Crowny sleep onto Crowny. Good E. Good patience from Crowny to make sure that he can make it out to safety. But Adam could be in trouble here. Flash in. Mickey X looking for the hook, forcing the flash out from Adam. And again, very tense exchanges here. LeBrov ultimately the only one to fall there. Another scenario where. One of the solo lanes just isn't around. Nuke was around mid, I think. I'm not sure how close he was to that fight, but he decided to back away. And BDS aren't working with a lot of range. Garen Rise have to get pretty close into uh, the face of G2 to actually layer down any damage. Then you're looking at Nautilus ults, you're looking at Lilia Sleeps, you're looking at the Jax jumping on top of you. And with Dragon spawning, that should be an easy pickup. BDS looking at the cross map, anything on the top side, try to take away some camps, put a little bit of vision down, see if anyone is being greedy up here from G2, but nope. They're all around bot side mid, and they'll pick that up really easily. No threat of a soul point. Still around 10 minutes away from any kind of soul. Yike. Just saw Crowny there for a second. Might get a nice little surprise. Leap over the wall. Crowny again, though. Gonna take a bit of poke here, get slowed a bit there. By the grudge from Caps, but we'll walk away fine for now. Has to be careful, though. Definitely Still stepping does. forward, knowing LeBrov is in the area, he feels all right. And I gotta say, this is the thing that's so terrifying again about playing against G2, is that BDS experienced this once before, and that was they had a massive lead, they were set up for success, one overstep from Shio gives Caps a 700 gold shutdown on Rise, and suddenly the game is unplayable. And here we have a similar situation where Yike was so far ahead, but BDS were finding ways across the map, fighting back, getting Adam fed, and then a single fight goes wrong, G2 get Baron, and again, the game feels so out of your hands so quickly, and this is one of the things that makes a team with as many veteran players as G2 terrifying is that they're very good at finding ways back to the game. Their mid game is just really, really good here at G2. They know how to group, they know when to group, they know how to put numbers on certain areas of the map of BDS. We're not really catching up. Shio might be able to steal this. He has full vision. G2 decide against the finish. They want to poke them out. They're just holding us at 3k. Does Yike just flash over and look for some kind of ultimate on the rest of BDS? Because this is getting a little bit sketchy. They might need to just drop this Baron, otherwise it's turning into just a straight up 50-50. There's no real looming no threat of spells to push Shio back. They're taking a bit of poke here, though. That does make it a little bit difficult. But overall, if you can get the Rise, if you can get the Garen, if you, if you can get into the back oh, they're gonna two, they're gonna flip it and they're gonna make it work. But now, Crowny stepping forward. Crowny going back over the wall, nailing Broken Blade, getting a little bit of damage down. Yikes, still standing, though. BDS, not sure if they want to keep this one going. Crowny now going and taking out Mickey X. Crowny looking for another one. Yike taken down. BDS trying to find the fight, but it's Hansama. Hansama untouched. Hansama on the back line. The Kaisa standing strong and looking to turn oh. the fight. The flash finish to make it work and a triple for Hans to win the day. 7-1-3 and three on this Kaisa. Such an exceptional performance in that fight. A lot of BDS were focusing on Yike there, and before he died, he got a massive sleep off, so Hans just had so much space to work with. And with 30 second death timers, I think they might be able to end here. G2 are full committing for it. They have barren enough creeps. Five seconds on the Brov, no ultimate. He can try to buy time, but he might die really quickly. 10 seconds on Crowny as well. Looks like they're gonna call it off. Don't wanna risk it. They could probably put a Nexus Tower there, but there's a risk of them dying, losing Baron buffs. So look at it again. So G2 here. 10, 15 seconds of just leaving the Baron really high on HP, but then they decide to burst it with Kaiser Q, with Jace Q, with Smite, so it's really hard for Shio to react in time. Crowny has to flash back over the wall here, and this is Crowny's repositioning. He's back over to join Labrov onto Mickey, and it looks really good, but watch Yike. He's gonna die, but he's gonna flash all just before he does. Broken Bay gets a big stun, and then Hans is free to hit. And this is the struggle, right? Early in the game, we actually saw Hansama down by a pretty significant margin, but we've gone long enough now that Hans is caught up. Hans does damage. Hans is a big threat. You cannot afford to ignore the Kaisa in these fights. And what was once looking pretty good, Goldie, 1.2k in favor of Crowny, 1.9 now in favor of Hansama on the back of that big fight, on the back of the previous fights as well. So the yeah. options and the windows of opportunity for BDS are just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah, and Hans just bought a Bloodthirster in base straight up. Had no components whatsoever, so he was sitting on so much gold. G2 trying to get these bot waves in, being really patient, waiting for Hans. Don't want to crash it just yet, there's no reason to. Caps has TP, he's pushing out top as well. He's a bit scared of getting caught, so he needs to see the rest of BDS before he can push it out to tier 3. Crowning's just going to pick up the red buff and recall. How do they hold against the Siege? Can G2 land a little bit of poke? Here comes a TP from Caps. 
decent damage down on the Hansama. Duke's starting to hurt. Two and a half items. Anathema's changed just to make sure that Shio is at least a little bit more tanky. Not sure who he has it on at this moment. BDS and LeBrov debating, can they go in here? G2 just want to keep the slow siege going. BDS eventually need to find an opportunity to go in, but it's a 10k gold deficit now. G2 starting the fight. Shio just has to lead back on safety. Shio down before the fight even starts. LeBrov trying to walk in, but BDS oh, just getting place. routed in their own base. An instant three-man stun. Now it's Hansama onto the backside of the fight. G2 are too far ahead. There is nothing left on the rift for BDS as G2 will take game one in dominant fashion. Indeed they will. G2 just... Playing better as a team, I think, grouped up. And uh, with this triple ultra threat pump even of G2. The carry pants can fall on anyone. It was Yike in the early to mid game and then Hansama in the late game. And it was a kind of similar story to the first time these, teams, uh, these two teams met up against each other. BDS found some signs of life. They found some kills. There was a point in the game where they're in actually a pretty good situation to look to win the game. But then G2 just numbers advantage in fights. BDS, a little bit of disrespect and holding certain objectives. G2 really quick to punish. And I think the positive for BDS is even when one or two of the moments in the early game did go awry, they were able to find other avenues, get away from Yike and the gold lead that he was building and try to play topside for Adam, find some advantages. But transitioning that into more was difficult. There were some positive signs there, but overall, G2, once they had that substantial lead, once they took that first Baron, just felt absolutely unwinnable for BDS. Their composition yep. too far ahead, range too far, just holding them at arm's length and shooting them with the big Jace gun. Yep, We're going to head over to the analyst desk where they'll talk more about the big shooty Jace gun. <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> bang. <laughs> Thank you All so right. much, Dracos. All right, yeah, that, that, that was amazing. That was yeah, amazing. You got a uh, big gun. You got to watch out for it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the hammer at times. <laughs> interesting uh, game on the side of G2 and interesting draft as well. This is going to be our first talking point here. Um, do we want to look at bot lane to so, understand how we ended up in a situation like this? Lots of bot lane ban all across the board. I thought this draft so far was really interesting just due to the fact that, well, first of all, G2 Esports on blue side is banning away a lot of the champions that we usually see uh -huh. red side ban. Heimerdinger, Caitlyn. Ash. And then I thought to myself, okay, so Maokai has been banned. That leaves open the Sejuani. Lucian Nami is also a possibility in this instance. But they completely flip the script. They go Jax and they wait all the way towards their later picks to mm -hmm. finally go for that bot lane composition. And I think it really tells the story between these two teams that whoever gets the best bot lane going for them is something that they're really looking for. Yeah, and I mean, as long as uh, Hansama or uh, Mickey rather has that Nautilus, he's going to be super happy down <laughs> on that bot side. I think the other thing too uh, with this Lilia coming in, for G2, I think was a fantastic pick. A, just like uh, as a matchup into the Sejuani, especially with the buffs to give her more percent uh, mm -hmm. HP damage, uh, better scaling as well. Like she just carves tanky front lines yeah. and is so fast that it's yeah. really hard to hit her once a fight starts uh, to get going. But then I think on top of that, BDS almost walk in to exactly what Alilia wants to fight against yeah. is like HP stacking frontline melee champions. You have an Alistar and a Garen coming in as the last two picks. Rise, who is also pretty short range. So so Lilia has so many targets, she can just dance around. Yeah, but it's also the fact that if Yike messes up like one time against those champions as well, because he's still very melee himself. Yes, he has the movement speed. You get caught by a set your ultimate, you're dead. Like, the, 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 what comes in there is um, really something you have to be meticulous around when you play around it. And I think Yike really succeeded with that. It also brings us to the Garen. It has to be talked about. Does, yeah. How, how does it make sense here? Because we talked about Adon and the wacky and strange picks that he can bring on top lane, but this one is maybe not some uh, pick that I was expecting here. So I hadn't seen it into the Jax. I've seen a bit no. of Garen actually be played in NA Challenger by a guy called Moose Hater, which is really entertaining <laughs> to watch, by the way. But the theory behind into the Jax matchup, at least from what I'm thinking, is the fact that when you go for your spin to win move, well, Counter-Strike doesn't actually block that, so you can still go for the attack, and we saw it even under the tower where he got that solo, solo kill, kill. Yeah. Um, as we get it from his point of view here. Yeah, I mean, it was super nice. He's literally just face tanking underneath the tower. Doesn't even matter. I think the minions end up finishing that one off. But the impressive thing I think about Adam is that he knows exactly how much damage he can do. Like, he just knows that he can get that it's kill like, I have lethal here. Like, yeah, I have lethal. I, I understand the limits of my Garen pick in the top play. It's just Adam thing. He's been practicing this one, uh, yeah. if I may. And it shows here, but... Um, 
the pick was not so effective, I want to say, afterwards. And even though BDS had a decent, and I want to say really good early game, it yeah. was not enough from them. Because that's the thing. Like, there was a point in this game where you felt like, wait a minute, BDS is running away with this one. Mm -hmm. Again, at least from the early game, from what it looked like, Garen looked well, even Crowny as well had a few good moments here on the Seri where it's like, well, if he gets a few more kills and the team fights keep going like this, this Seri is going to be a Seri moment. But then... Finally, something happened as well on the G2 side. Yeah, I mean, I just think that when you look at front-to-back team fights for these teams, like, the front line of BDS cannot survive. Yes. Because you have Lilia, HP Shred. You have Kaisa down on the bot side. Great Shred on the passive there, too. So, I don't know. The, the way I see it, unless unless BDS was finding Lilia or Kaisa immediately at the start of the fight, mm -hmm. they had no chance. And even, like, there was a fight where they instantly deleted Han Sama but Yike was still alive. So finding one wasn't enough of a solution for them to come away. I think that this game, once Lilia got fed in the early game, was nigh impossible uh, just compositionally for them to take traditional team fights. And that's really what's beautiful here because last time they played against each other, BDS ran away with it too. They were the one where, oh, sh shut, uh, bot lane is suddenly working as well and we need to come back into it. In that game, it was Cap stepping up. In this game, it was the rookie of G2 who had to put the pressure on his shoulder, put the team in the backpack and said, you know what, I'm going to carry on the Lilia. And mm -hmm. specifically the fight towards up the top lane was where they really started to come back. But we see it multiple times. These snowballs, these bowling balls to come through, which oh. is perfect. And it talked about an experienced Lilia player. This wasn't just the first time he's played this champion. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm a bit of a Lilia connoisseur. Oh, so really? I, I was watching, I was like, this is great. I'm loving what I'm seeing. Just like even keeping the movement speed up within uh, like leading up that cape. Fight, well, 95. Everything. Wow. He was just all over the map. And I think that the big difference in this game compared to most of the split was it wasn't G2 setting up Yike to invade, do all these things, setting up for ganks. It was him reacting to plays around the map, like that play in mid lane. Wait. It worked out is absolutely. she alive? Hello? What? No, she's sleeping. Move! She's sleeping. What's it called when you sign. kill an animal and Sleepy then deer. you make them like taxidermy? <laughs> taxidermy. I think that's oh what happened. Oh no, 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 no. She, she's just sleeping, guys. <laughs> she's, just, <laughs> she's just sleeping. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes, like, just go sleeping. Go of go course, yeah, of course. There's a Zoe on Silence, <laughs> ultimate stole. Yep, yep. But but uh, that makes that makes sense. a bit more uh, on the eye here because I think it's really interesting the fact that we we, we talked about this guy and the uh, agency and and the role that he took within G2. And to me here, I mean, it's an example once again. He is capable of. Shining with new picks, picks that we don't see in the LEC, but also making them work. And I, I, I don't see anyone else really. Right and now that's a big thing because you know how many times have we seen pro players that doesn't adapt to meta champions? Yeah. And this guy doesn't just ad adapt; he brings in his own champion pool as well. And coming in with your first year of LEC, doing this just speaks to a guy that's going to have a great career ahead of him. And just the movements he's got right now, the plays he's committing to. This is a guy who wants to win a championship and go further. It's amazing to see. Already very high expectations for G2. And that makes me wonder, what else does Yike have prepared coming in to the group stage? Right. What else does G2 have ready too? Because we get to see more games for them, not just today, but throughout. And this is always a team that has creative picks and creative answers to the meta picks, right? Uh, yeah. This was a, we see Sejuani come in, everyone else is playing Vi, forget that. Vi's garbage, we want to play the Lilia. <laughs> uh, so I, I have no doubt that they have many other ideas and creative answers into these big That's picks. That's the thing, that generally when I asked you to, and I, hey, do you have some strange picks prepared? I never know if they're trolling or not, but I know they will be able to surprise us, but Focusing on this series here, BDS picks blue side for game two expected here, but what yes. kind of adaptation can we plan on the side of BDS? Because promising again, but it was not enough after the early game. Well, there's multiple sides we can see this from. I think when you go blue side instead, if you're not picking Adam's champion pool immediately, you're putting him in a position where he doesn't get the counter pick. Mm -hmm. But the trade-off for that is that you get the chance to put bot lane in a better position again. You get to go for some of the lanes that you want to priority pick. Yes, you don't have to counter pick on the support side, but if you pick up the Locks of the Caitlyn, the Lucian Nami, all of these like huge champions we're talking about, because you only have three bands, but there's Heimat, there's Ash, there's Caitlyn, and there's Lucian. So that's four coming through there, right? So at least one of those should be available to you. And we know how much Crowny and Lebrov have been able to help BDS and set BDS for success so far. So maybe you're focusing a bit more on bot lane. It's a bot lane diff always in a bot lane story. <laughs> it's a bot look. Yeah, top <laughs> lane, Adam's, you know, getting yeah, turned over and still getting solo kills himself. It just doesn't matter. I'm just <laughs> saying, if a bot lane gets a 2v2 kill, they run away with the game. If a top laner gets a solo kill, nothing happens. Yeah, his bot lane's <laughs> feeding is what's happening. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Crowny and Lafra played well. We'll see if uh, BDS no, is I, able <laughs> to come back here in game two. Thank you, guys. We'll see you right after the break for the second game of Team BDS versus G3 Sports. Stay tuned.
Nuke relatively low on mana. Hook into the minion, though. Definitely not ideal. LeBron waiting with Hexplash over the wall, but I don't think he can save it. He's just going into the midst of the meat grinder, and no one else is there. Oh, they are just throwing kills into Bambi. We talk about signature oh, champions. Oh, the solo kill under tower. Looking for the solo kill, trying to finish up. Oh, just in time. The graphic backing it up. Adam. Take tower first. Look, look. Ruga right. Let's Look, look, look. Yeah, yeah. Oh, looks look, 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 look,